Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome one and all on September 12th, 2022. The email address of what my prime guest, number one guest, is keep oil in the ground. That's pretty self-explanatory. And we have not one, but three guests today. And each one of them is a passionate advocate for supporting Hawaii's initiative for 100% clean energy by the year 2045. When Governor Ige announced this some years ago, we were completely, Hawaii was completely out in the wilderness in having such an insanely ambitious goal. Guess what? Many states have joined us now, including California, which is usually leading the pack, but good old Hawaii led the pack this time. And we have since made that goal more and more ambitious all the way to decarbonization of the entire economy. Talk about being wildly ambitious, but I'm sure we all agree that we need drastic revolutionary changes. If we're going to keep more homes from falling down onto the beach in the North Shore and wildfires occurring even in little old uh, Hawaii, forget to California. So we all know the urgency. And these three guests, Mr. Uh, Matt Geyer, who took the lead, Noel Morin, who has been my guest before, and Dr. Paul Bernstein, UH Economics. So welcome to all three of you. And Matt, please take it away. Thank you, Howard. So we formed Hawaii Environmental Change Agents for a lot of the reasons that you just mentioned, that the dire, urgent environmental problems that we face as well as the fact that the way to make change quickly is through legislative changes. Hawaii Environmental Change Agents is an independent organization that focuses on creating coalitions, people, organizations that address these environmental problems that we face, such as climate change, as well as resilience and equitable adaptation. Our mission is to build these groups and then support them and magnify their impact, get them all working together and do it really, really fast because we don't have a lot of time. But so we're, we're grassroots, we're independent, we're, we're formed by volunteers, people, no one single organization uh, is organizing this. But a lot of us in these in HECA are from and represent a lot of other different organizations. Uh, Matt, just to jump in with a very cheery note, because Lord knows we can have enough uncheery notes, just had a uh, conference call the other day with the manufacturer of uh, spray foam insulation. I think everybody is familiar with uh, the fiberglass, the pink stuff that goes into walls to protect from, in, in Hawaii's case, keep the heat out, and in the northern climates, keep the heat in. Well, the, an alternate type of insulation is called spray foam, where you have these big canisters and you spray into the wall cavities and everywhere else, and it does a beautiful job of really, really sealing the home light like an icebox, and then you actually have to bring outside air in well, it turns out that not only does this spray foam do a beautiful job of insulation, but it strengthens the structure of a home, both lateral forces and vertical forces, earthquakes and strong winds. So wow. we've been searching, searching for those measures which can increase resilience of homes and save energy at the same time. So this was a great piece of news. So I pass that cheeriness on to you, Matt. Please proceed. 
Thank you. Yeah, that's that's the kind of fantastic ideas that we want to support as part of PICA's mission. So if there's a individual out there that has, you know, sees something like this, like this, this insulation, it's going to save a lot of energy and make a better, you know, structure for people, then you can join HECA. You can, we can help you form your own task force to address an issue like this and say, we need to do this in our government buildings. We need to do this. Um, we need to support this with tax policy or, or whatever, you know, is going to get this idea off the ground quicker and really push the idea forward, both into the public space by engaging the public, but also engaging legislators and the real change makers. We go back. So yeah, that that these are the task forces that we have currently. We have the carbon cashback, clean power. I'm not going to read them all. There's a lot of great task forces out there. And again, it really only takes one person who just is really passionate about an issue. And we will will help you create this task force. We'll get people to join. We'll 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 share with you um, how we can help you get legislation drafted and passed. All the steps we're we're working really hard to try to support these task forces as best as possible, and get all these all these different but linked environmental issues working together and get them all moving forward as fast as possible. And so here's our values, um, along with addressing all these different issues, we need to focus on making sure there is equity at the heart of what we are doing. And make sure that when you make a, especially in the legislature, you make a change that how is that going to impact the wider community? How is it going to impact the people who are already feeling the impacts, who are already feeling the worst impacts, including, you know, not just here in Hawaii, but, you know, our, our Pacific Islands who are going to lose their entire communities? And how are we going to address things in a way that's equitable for them? And that's really important because inequity is also at the heart of why we are facing the challenges we are facing. So we can't make more policies that are inequitable and address climate change. We have to focus on equity. And I'd like to just chime in on that last point because uh, what, what Matt, you just described uh, can also be viewed from the standpoint of the challenges that that we face um, that that are that we experience collectively uh, from the threat of climate change is um, uh, it it uh, uh, it affects certain communities more than others, right? And generally, these would be the communities that are least uh, able to afford the things that they need to do to be able to get away from harm. So the inequities that we're talking about. Uh, are also uh, reflected in um, communities that are ill-equipped to, um, you know, lift themselves out of, uh, you know, the the states that they're in, 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 you know, in terms of being able to afford renewable energy solutions, electric cars, and so on and so forth. So as we move forward with our solutions, we have to, we must um, pay attention to the social equity component. And let me just chime in and give a real simple example of that. In lower income homes, uh, refrigerators tend to be a major energy user because you, number one, it's an old, old fridge. Number two, you tend to have a lot of people under that roof. The more people you have, the more cooking you have, the more that refrigerator is gonna be very well used. An old refrigerator consumes about 1,400 kilowatt hours a year. A new refrigerator, same size with all those new bells and whistles, 400 kilowatt hours. A savings of a thousand kilowatt hours a year right off the bat, you get a better refrigerator. So one thing that uh, we State Energy Office and others are doing is further incentivizing the purchase of new refrigerators for low income people by giving them a really, really good uh, financial incentive. Thank you. Howard, it's a very valuable point. In a previous conversation I had, 
I, I, I shared um, the, a comment that the best renewable energy solution out there is efficiency, right? Mm -hmm. It's like if you can reduce the need for energy to begin with, then you can do quite a bit in terms of addressing pocketbook issues, but more importantly, uh, emissions. So that's just spot on. Mm -hmm. And like you said, many of these solutions can both reduce their energy use, but increase quality, quality of life. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's so important. I'd like to get back to the slide that where you had the um, the different task forces. And as I was looking at that, and as, as you were uh, sharing, I couldn't help but think about the metaphor of the canoe, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Hika is almost like this canoe. We, we've created this opportunity, this space for organizations, for individuals who care about the environment, care about the climate, they care about taking action to affect you know, one part of it, which inevitably is connected to all parts of it to get into this space where we are able to help each other move further, faster. So um, I liken Hika to this canoe, this canoe metaphor. And uh, to make it very clear, we offer quite a few resources that enable economies of scale. And what I mean by that is, for example, the ability to draft legislation. There could be a group out there that would like to create a bill or write a bill and then have a, a, a legislator sponsor the bill, but may not have the experience. However, within HECA, we have resources that have that expertise uh, because of their past experiences, and they actually can help organizations with that particular task. The other, the other thing that we do is, um, and it's really focused on this coalition building, and, and again, it goes back to this uh, uh, opportunity to create economies of scale. If if one organization's out there trying to get their word out to a, a certain part of the community or, or all of the community, um, it's much harder if they're doing it alone. If they work with another group that is or a coalition that has very sh uh, similar interests uh, or even slightly similar interests, we now have the opportunity to reach a much broader group of people with certain priority messages. So we HICA offers this um, this opportunity. Uh, a few more items, uh, discussions with local leaders. So one of the things that is really important is to uh, create the will for change and um, having conversations with our political leaders, our government leaders enables that. So creating the space or the opportunity for those conversations to take place is something that HICA has been doing and will continue to do. So these are just a sample of the things that we offer. It's essentially a way to leverage each other but also leverage similar resources. Could be social media, it could be marketing content, it could be a Zoom webinar. These are activities that can certainly be done by individual organizations, but when you bring a number of them together, you magnify the impact of each effort. So I just wanted to call attention to that. It's a very powerful uh, component of, of, Hawaiian, um, uh, of HICA, and um, you know, we invite other groups to, uh, to join us and find out uh, you know, the power of this, this coalition and effect the change that they'd like to see. Thank you, Noel. And economists usually are not very silent, but here is Mr. Dr. Bernstein being very, very silent. I'm sure we miss his wisdom here. I don't know about what wisdom, but I'll just add on to Noel that um, also what Hika offers is the ability for all of us to learn from each other and therefore to become stronger, right? We can learn different elements. We don't know, we certainly don't know all the different dimensions of climate change. It's a very complex issue. We don't know all the lived experiences of different folks when it comes to inequities and what have you. So, so HECA provides that. And um, not sure if this is the right opportunity and can let Matt go with this, but that's, for example, why HECA has put on various events over the last year plus to bring these different groups together, learn from each other, and to go forward and with legislation and work on legislation to get the bills in place or laws in place that we need to affect the change that we ultimately need to address climate change. So I'm gathering that you have lined up a cadre of uh, um, like-minded legislators where you get a good legislative idea and then pass it off to that legislator to introduce? Yeah, so um, 
the legislative portion of, of what the services we offer, I think, again, saying what Noel said was offering the ability to draft, help draft legislation. Going back to that canoe metaphor, instead of being uh, in the canoe and you get to the legislative session and you see what bills are there. And so you either say stop or go, right? You either say, let's support this one or let's uh, testify against it. And that's that's been a lot of the experience that I've had in legislative sessions is that's what you see. And we're we're saying these environmental task forces need to be able to steer the canoe where it needs to go. So help them draft legislation that is what needs to happen and then support that. And we have we we then reach out to a variety of different legislators. It's different for each task force, probably. Um, but making we we help make make and maintain those connections, and that's that's so so important. But yes, uh, going back to we do have an event, uh, as Paul mentioned, we have an event this Saturday, September seventeenth. From 10 to 11:30 a.m., you can register at bit.ly/pika10, or just go to our website at hawaiichangeagents.org, and you should find the registration information there. And that's this Saturday, September 17th, 10 to 11:30. We have Dr. Dale Grabowski, uh, Director of Shamanad's Environmental Studies Program. We have Dyson Chi. Executive Director, Hawaii Youth Climate Coalition, Dr. McKenna Kaufman, a UH professor with expertise in energy and climate policy, Representative Nicole Lowen. She's the chair of the Hawaii Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection. Dr. Debbie Milliken, Director of Sustainability at Punahou School, and Beth Tokioka, who's the Communication Man Manager at Hawaii Island Utility Cooperative. And these are all really big, uh, important climate leaders. We're going to have a panel discussion. Dr. Grabowski is going to provide a keynote. Should be a really exciting event that will help us guide us in this upcoming 2023 session. And let, let me just uh, second that, Matt, by saying that Dr. Grabowski specializes in Micronesia and other South Seas islands. And as we know, many of them are literally going underwater or they have reached that stage where the ocean rise uh, prohibits them from raising crops. The roots wanna go down and the roots hit salt water and boom, there, there goes your crop. So they become refugees and many of those refugees have uh, ended up here in uh, Hawaii. And she has taken a lot of them in as grad students and each of those grad students from Micronesia and South Seas is specializing in different uh, environmental areas. So she, she'll be quite an inspirational uh, speaker. Thank you. If I may, I'd like to just add one more dimension to what we do. So, so far, everything we've talked about has been around helping um, environmental groups, um, you know, uh, focus their 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 uh, their priorities and, and gain the benefit of uh, this coalition that we just discussed. There's another dimension to what we do, and that is empowering the general public. So encouraging the general public to be engaged in the political process. And and sometimes it's very overwhelming to be able to understand, you know, where the bills are at, how they impact you, and more importantly, how to get your voices heard. Right, submitting a submitting testimony and support or against something um, is a process that not everybody is familiar with or nor uh, are they comfortable with. So one of the things that we do is also educate the public, encourage them to be involved in the process so that once they start, you know, once they submit that first testimony, they, re they realize that it's demystified. It's so easy that they will then be more active participants in the process. So that's another dimension that I think is very, very critical for any of the groups out there that are working to get change. Um, enabled through the political process, and we're certainly doing it. Yeah, well, I think we all remember when legislator laws, policy, that was something very, very vague for the big people. And then you get drawn into it and you learn how to do things. And all of a sudden, boom, hey, I've got some power here.
Yes. And uh, related to that, we have within the energy office a group called the Wayfinders. And these are generally young people who are serving as interns who are going out into the community, generally underserved communities, and addressing environmental issues, especially those environmental issues that impact that community directly. So I'm going to hook you people up with the director of that program so that you will learn what, what they're doing and maybe ally with them. Yeah, I was just going to say, if anyone wants to participate, join a task force, uh, start their own task force, just learn more, attend the, the event this Saturday, check us out online again, uh, hawaiichangeagents.org, email hawaiichangeagents at gmail.com. Uh, as you mentioned, Howard, my email is keepwellintheground at gmail.com. And yeah, be in touch. We we need everyone to be doing something, even if it's not perfect, even if you're not sure you're doing the right thing, just start taking action now. And as you continue to take more and more little actions, you'll get better, you'll refine it, and we can all get there together. But we do need people urgently to take action. And this is one way you can participate, jump in, and make a difference. And you people can serve as, as the guide posts along the way. They, they can say, I'm a total amateur. I want to do this. How do I do it? You people can give them uh, guidance. Yeah, we end, up, we end up learning from each other, right? We, we have some experience. We have a lot of experience on our team. Uh, we have people who have been in the legislature, who um, have drafted legislation. We have all this depth of expertise. You know, you see Noel and Paul here. I'm kind of the newbie, uh, and I learn so much from these guys all the time. But we we all learn from each other. So if if a, if someone watching right now joins us, yeah, you're, you're going to learn from us. We're going to learn from you, and we're going to figure out the best path forward. I guess I would just add that, I mean. It's building on all of this, it, it's just a great way, joining HECA is a great way to leverage your voice, right? You have several other uh, task forces already set up. You have people with the, ex the experience, you already have members of these various task forces. So it's a great way to, to leverage your voice. And HECA, as you've been saying, it's taking advantage of, of grassroots, of media, grass tops, what have you, all these different levers that we can pull to try and get legislation that we need passed. So again, echo what Matt's saying, highly encourage you to come to the, this Saturday's event and, uh, and please join. Oh, just another example of what could be done. Uh, just received a call from a friend of mine on the mainland named Gary Klein, and he is, is an award-winning innovator for plumbing or water efficiencies within uh, buildings. And he'll be coming to Hawaii um, in early October, and we're uh, arranging for a webinar for him to uh, present. So I'm going to pass that information on to you guys, and then you doubtlessly have a, a water efficiency uh, task force. And you can invite them, and they can get involved and learn a heck of a lot. Just to just another good example of getting the word out and empowering people. I'd like to do one plug, and Paul, I'm going to put you on the spot here, and that is um, with uh, uh, with our activities. We have been act we have been uh, intentionally engaged with our youth. Right, they they come to this challenge with a different perspective. They know that um, you know the concerns that we're trying to address are their concerns and their children's concerns. Right, we're we're. We're looking at a way to ensure that we have a livable world for for everybody moving forward and future generations especially so um uh, uh dyson Chi, who's going to be at our uh event this saturday uh is a uh, leader for hawaii youth climate coalition uh paul has been dr uh, driving an effort with citizens climate lobby we have uh, youth um, high school students who are actively engaged in climate action and uh, we invite our youth to be very, very active and participatory in in this in this um, this journey because they, at the end of the day, are are going to be the the leaders of the future, and they're already taking the step to making that happen today. So, Paul, I don't know when, if you want to just pitch um, what's happening with our uh, youth, but I think that's also worth uh, a worthwhile uh, note. Yeah, I'll 
Um, I appreciate that. Um, just add, and maybe in a future show, Howard, um, <laughs> before December 3rd, we could actually have a few youth on to talk about an event that they are working with folks from Citizens Climate Lobby, actually um, Dr. Debbie Milliken at Punahou, um, a, a shout out to Representative Amy Peruso, who scheduled event for December 3rd, centered around youth getting involved in democracy. So um, the event will be at the Capitol Saturday, December 3rd from probably around nine to three. Um, feature uh, very youth centric, um, listening to their climate stories, helping the youth learn more about the legislative process um, from the beginning of writing a bill to following it all the way through till it becomes a law. Um, workshops to actually develop bills, a um, little bit of learning about uh, uh, climate change, uh, how that works and how policies affect different parts of climate change or the drivers of, of climate change. So anyways, yeah, it would be great to see them uh, sometime in November on your show, Howard. Okay, I've, I've just made a note where I will uh, definitely invite you. And that brings to mind the fact that a colleague of mine in the energy office was at Iolani School on Saturday, and there was a big ostensibly robotics uh, uh, show, you know, the different uh, kids developing different types of robots and performing. But also there was a lot of uh, environmental tables out there. And she said the best group was fourth graders. The fourth graders were very, very knowledgeable and very passionate about climate change, and you know that they are gonna bug the heck out of their parents about uh, do, doing the right thing. And the more we can bring them up, bring them up, because uh, I, I for one, am not gonna be on the planet forever, but we need to hand off the leadership mm -hmm. to these younger people. And it, it just uh, feels really good. And on that cheery note, I believe we are out of time. So thank you, gentlemen, one and all. This has been delightful. And I've made a note to bring you back in mid-November in preparation for the December 3rd event. So this is Think Tech Hawaii, Howard Wig, Code Green. See you next time. Again, mahalo to all three gentlemen. Aloha. 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 Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.